Hey folks, Tom here from FX Home. We use Mocha for a lot of our visual effects. So whether you're new to Mocha or just fancy learning a couple of tricks, today we're going over some essentials for working with Mocha. Though Mocha comes with HitFilm Pro, you can follow along in Express by treating yourself to the Mocha add-on. With our footage prepared on the timeline, we'll first begin by applying the Mocha plugin from the effects window. We can find it under Boris Effects Mocha. Grab Mocha Hip Film and apply it to your footage. Mocha works within its own interface, so open the drop down and launch Mocha UI. Welcome to the Mocha interface. Let's have a brief walkthrough over the tools you'll be working with. Right off the bat, we have the viewer, taking the majority of the screen with our footage open. Below that is the timeline. You can use the mouse wheel to scrub through the footage. In the bottom left is a small window to indicate the frame number you'll be working with. Then the play functions are bottom center starting with play backwards, previous frame, stop, next frame, and play forward. These are kept distant from the tracking tools to avoid confusion, though the panic does wake you up during roto. Last we have the keyframe tools in the bottom right. We have jump to previous key, add or subtract a keyframe, remove all keys, and auto key enable. You'll want to leave this active to keep your workflow smooth and save you the trouble of adding a new keyframe on each adjustment. Up above the viewer we have the toolbar, in the far left corner is the save icon. This doesn't save to a location, but actually saves over the actual plugin, storing your data for when you next load. Beside that is the marquee selection, or arrow icon. You'll use this tool to navigate around Mocha as well as adjust points on the masking, while pan tool beside it helps move around the viewer window. You can access this by using the X shortcut on the keyboard. To zoom on details, we'll use Z in order to activate the magnifying glass tool. The next three tools are for masking. First up is the X-Spline tool. This is your most frequent tool for generating masks. This generates sharp points and lines that you can manipulate easily. When using the X-Spline tool, left click to pin down a point, then go around the area you need. When done, right click to end the tool. You can see how strong these edges are, but if we click and drag over the area to select them all, we can move the blue handles in and out to round the edges. Within this tool, we have the x additionals to add more masks within the layer. Very similar is the Bezier tool. This acts like the x though creates smoother maskings. When creating your mask, you'll need to hold the click in order to adjust the smoothness and curve. For simple shapes, there's also the option for square and elliptical masks. The final tools in this listing are for tracking and plenty of views. The planar surface is the display results for the corner pin tracking. When activated, the square will remain center of the mask. You can move these with the blue corners. And in order to help determine the perspective, a grid can be provided. We'll be using this later for our screen. The last icon is the set to frame size. You may need this if you're working with any form of transition. Beside these tools is the workspace selection. You're welcome to explore and find a space that fits your needs, as Mocha has an array of powerful tracking tools. But as this is an essentials overview, I'll be sticking with the basics. You've got to walk before you can run, unless you're Iron Man. For this tutorial, I'll be going over perspective tracking and two methods of rotoscope. Let's begin with perspective track. I'll begin by finding a point where the image is clear, as anything obstructing the markers will throw off the track. As you can see from our footage, we have these markers on the phone to help act as a guided reference. As they're circular and prepared already, I'll activate the elliptical tool, then click and drag to the size of my circle. Now, if I select all the points, I can rotate and resize these till they fit over the marker. Use Z to activate the magnifying glass and zoom into the area. This is good, but for a stable track, we'll need more data. So let's make more points within this layer. Go into the elliptical tool, click and hold till the menu opens. Now go to x -Blime Plus. We're going to redo the techniques from before to place another circle over the mark. You can repeat this as many times as you want. The more you have, the stronger your track data will be. You can even add a square x -Blime Plus to secure the mark's hold if you're feeling brave. With our marks laid out, activate the planar surface and grid display. We're going to align this with our screen. But before we track, let's go over the options for tracking. We have translation, which is the position of the item in X and Y space, along with scale and rotation. We all know what that means. Skew and perspective are the distortions of an object from a point of reference while moving in 3D space. As this is what occurs in our screen, let's activate these options. I think we're about ready to track, so hit the forward track icon. Should you notice any slides in the tracking markers, stop the track and realign the point the best you can. We want to keep these points as close to the original anchor that we set. And as long as automatic keyframe is enabled, any adjustment will set down a key. Once complete, it's a good habit to review the clip to ensure the track is stable. Looks good, well done. 
so we can now export this layer. Let's go down under exports and select export tracking data. Now we're presented with two options for export, transform and corner pin. Transform is your standard track, something you'd likely use for feature tracking, for motion graphics, text and icons. While corner pin keeps the perspective that we've just made for our screen. So we'll select that, name the file and save. We'll save the mocha file and close the application with the X in the top right corner. Now, back in HitFilm, we're going to head over to Import and find our mocha data. You'll notice that on opening, a new composition shot has been created called Input with a plane layer. Open the footage dropdown and under Effects, you'll notice Quad Warp. This is the effect that repositions the layer. To apply this layer to your own needs, copy the effect, jump into your comp, generate a new plane and paste it onto that layer. We know that you can be more creative than just a plane though. You want something to play on the screen. So right click the layer and make it a composite shot, being sure to leave the effects and properties here in this comp. Once that's set, you can throw anything into this composite and it will fill the space of the perspective track. That's right, anything. Let's go under Roto, relaunch the Mocha UI and your file should automatically load up. Before we dive in, the only thing I haven't talked through is the layer window. In here, we can enable visibility of the layer activate their tracking processes, set colors to help display, and of course, rename the layer, which I'll do now before I add any more layers. We're going to row the screen as well as the thumb that passes over. Let's begin with the screen by using the rectangular mask tool. I'll drag this over the area, reposition my pins to fit the corners. With a simple shape like this, we can track the details similar to earlier's corner pin. We'll activate skew, but leave perspective disabled to only focus on simple shapes such as circles, triangles, and squares to get better results while tracking. Meaning this rotoscope is a breeze. When you have a point covered and obscured like here with this thumb, you can simply stop the track, setting a keyframe by using the keyframe icon, then jumping to where visibility restored and realign the pin. Now that was the easy one. Due to the complexity of the shape, there is a lot of detail to consider, so tracking will not be an option. This is a manual job. Scrub the timeline till you have a clear sight of the entire thing. Set your mask. Instead of track, we'll move a set number of frames and readjust the masking for the duration of the motion. Depending on your footage, this can be a really long process. So get your headphones on. I'd recommend a decent podcast, or if you're on a deadline, the soundtrack to Mad Max Fury Road. Let me know your personal choices for getting through Roto in the comment section. Once these are done, select the layer and use Alt 1 to activate the color mat. We can now see the area we've cut. With these two as rotoscoped masks, we're going to export them as shape data. Select both layers and hit Export Shape Data and save. Similar to the previous import, we'll select Import, find the file, but this time plain layers have been imported with masks named Spline 1. It's best practice to give these a rename before using them anywhere else. Alternatively, for single layered rotoscopes, you can turn the layer into the mask itself by going into the effects window, opening Mocha's dropdown, and in matte, select apply matte. To select a particular layer, you can enter the layer visibility menu to pick and choose. Invert layers if you're wanting to remove the selection. There's a great amount that you can do with Mocha, and if you want to learn more, check out the card on screen now. That'll take you to a playlist where we have a bunch of tutorials covering this subject. But be sure not to miss a thing by subscribing and ringing the bell to be notified on our next HitFilm tutorial.